So five months ago, I had a holiday. I went to Zimbabwe and I had a lovely time during Christmas. But at first, before I even planned the journey, I was thinking, is this a good idea? I almost canceled the trip because as we know, everything has gone up, the cost of living crisis. And I was just considering everything, how much it was going to cost me to go to Zimbabwe because going to Africa is expensive. Let's call a thing a thing. It's even more expensive than taking a trip to somewhere in Europe. I was so conflicted because on the one hand, I hadn't been to Zimbabwe for a long time, for ages, and it was starting to get to me. And to be quite honest, it was actually making me miserable. The fact that I had gone so long without going to Zimbabwe. So I had to really think long and hard. And I had to sit down as well to do my calculations and to plan carefully. That's why in this video, I want to share with you some of the tips or some of the things that I did to enjoy that holiday to actually manage to go in the first place. Now then, first things first, the very first thing you want to do, or my first tip is to actually decide where you want to go. What kind of holiday do you want to have? Do you want to have an adventurous holiday? You know, the trip of a lifetime, is that what you want? Or you want to go on a relaxing holiday where you can just lie on the beach and soak up some sun. So decide what type of holiday you want because different places offer different things. So when you pick a place to go, make sure that that place offers you what you're seeking. Because as I said, different places offer different things. For example, if you want to experience beach life, there's no point in you picking a landlocked country that doesn't have the sea or the beach. So pick your place accordingly. Another thing to consider as well when you're picking a place to go is time of year. You want to look at the weather depending on what it is that you desire. If you want to go to a cold place, maybe where you are at the moment is so hot, you want to go somewhere where it's cooler or you want to go somewhere where it's nice and hot. So depending on what it is that you want, you want to look at the weather of that country, what temperatures are depending on the season and so forth. You want to also look at the travel requirements because there's no point in you making those plans and everything before looking at the travel requirements. Because depending on your situation, on your passport that is, if you've got a Zimbabwean passport, for example, and you want to go, let's say to Spain, then you want to look at the visa requirements for Spain. Can you go to Spain on your SIM passport or do you need a visa to go to Spain? And if you need a visa, what are the requirements of you getting a visa? So you want to do your due diligence to avoid frustrations because if you skip this part, suppose you don't bother to check if you're allowed to go to Spain on that SIM passport and you just go ahead and book your ticket. And then near the time you discover that actually you need a visa to go to Spain. And then you are now rushing around and you also discover that that process takes maybe two weeks or three weeks and you only got one week left. So that becomes tricky. You would have wasted money. And also you want to check if your passport is in date because as a general rule, your passport needs to be valid for at least six months. So you want to take a look at your passport and actually check, physically check to see if it is within those six months. Because I know of some people who forgot to double check their passports to see if they were in date only to get to the airport and to be told, your passport is expired. That is a nightmare scenario that you don't want to experience. So double check and triple check everything when it comes to travel requirements. Also check for your travel insurance if you need travel insurance. And it's always wise to have travel insurance whenever you are traveling to a place, especially if that place is not your home country. Personally, when I go to Zimbabwe, I don't really need travel insurance, although it is wise to have it because I don't permanently live there. But it is wise to have travel insurance whenever you're traveling to a place because emergencies unfortunately happen. Things happen. You might have a little accident or a major one that needs medical attention. So if you've got your travel insurance, you're covered. You can just go to the hospital and get attended to. So make sure you've got all your documents. Now, my next tip that I have on my list is you want to book in advance. Now, I know sometimes you can get a really good deal if you book last minute, it happens. But do you want to risk that? Because it's not guaranteed that when you're about to travel, you get that good deal. It's not a guaranteed situation. So the best thing to do if you're traveling on a budget is to book in advance. Because when you book in advance, you're more likely to get a good deal if you book in advance. I have done it several times because when I went to Zimbabwe this time, I booked my ticket. I think it was like five months in advance. I know some people might think, oh, it's a bit over the top, but that's when I booked five, six months in advance somewhere there. 
and when i booked i actually made it a point to compare the prices i just wanted to see i wanted to prove this so i booked my ticket and it cost me whatever it cost me and then i checked nearer the time just as i was about to travel i checked what the prices were for the same airline and i discovered that the prices had nearly doubled. So this is why I would advise anyone who is traveling on a tight budget to book in advance. And also the good thing about booking in advance is that there are travel agencies that will actually allow you to pay in installments. They can give you like four months or three months installments. So if you book in advance, that is possible for you to do because you have plenty of time to actually pay those installments rather than you booking last minute because unfortunately they can only tell you the price that is available and it is more likely that the prices would have gone up and you no longer have that option to pay in installments over a considerable period of time. Something that you can actually manage if you're on a tight budget because those travel agencies will be able to work with you and also sometimes when you're booking that ticket maybe you've called up the agency and say oh can you find me an affordable ticket to go to zimbabwe or to spain or to greece wherever you want to go then if you book in advance they might tell you okay we have a flight but are you flexible how flexible are you now that flexibility it's mostly possible if you book in advance if you plan your trip in advance and also planning means that you have to look at your work schedule your rota and put in a request in advance so that when you are booking you know exactly what your work schedule is like and then when you're booking you can book knowing that okay these are the dates that i've got and i have got a bit of leeway i can adjust now having said that if you're on a strict budget you really want to book during off-peak season you don't want to book during peak season like easter summertime christmas time and so forth during those times it is a given that tickets will be higher than the other times so if you know that your bank balance is not looking that healthy then even though you want to go during the summertime, consider going a little earlier or after the summer period to save a bit of money. And another important thing as well to mention is when you're picking the flight, consider budget airlines. Consider airlines such as Ryanair, fast jet and so forth the next thing to look at is accommodation obviously if you're traveling to a place you need a place to stay now if you're on a strict budget then you want to consider options that will actually make it possible for you to save a bit of money you can consider shared accommodation that's one way to save money or you can do airbnbs as well those tend to be cheaper especially if you book in advance if you prefer a guest house or a hotel having said that yes we know hotels sometimes tend to be expensive more expensive than shared accommodation some lodges and so forth but if you do it in advance or if you book in advance rather there are places like booking.com and other sites i tend to use booking.com whenever i've done my booking well in advance i have been able to find cheap accommodation in three-star hotels four-star hotels i've been able to find something that i can actually afford it is because you do it in advance because again just like the flights the prices go up nearer the time this is because those accommodation get filled up the spaces or the rooms become fewer and fewer nearer the time so if you book in advance you have more options to choose from and also what i've realized is that sometimes we look at the stars and i know yes stars are an indication of the type of hotel or the quality or the type of services and as we know the higher or the more the stars the better the quality of hotels that is like in an ideal world that is what you're supposed to get but what i've realized is that sometimes those stars don't always indicate what's actually on the ground meaning that if you're in a tight budget some of the stars like three star hotels two star hotels some of those places if you look carefully you'll find that some of those places are actually good places some of the services that you get from a three star hotel are actually better than some of the services you get from a four star hotel i've actually experienced this another important thing to consider when it comes to accommodation on a strict budget is location 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 this is because if you're on a tight budget you want a location that is convenient you want a location where you can access 
services, other services that you need. For example, you want to stay in a place where you can easily find supermarkets nearby or where there are markets nearby, vegetable markets and so forth. You want to stay in a place that is convenient, a place where you can easily find transport or a place where that allows you to connect from one place to the next easily. You don't want to book a place that is in a remote place where it is difficult for you to find transport to connect from one place to the next. I did that when I went to Portugal. Unfortunately, I wasn't wise when I was booking a place to stay. I didn't look carefully. And also a contributing factor was that it was my first time going there and I didn't know what I was doing, quite frankly. And maybe I should have asked people who come from there for advice. That is another thing as well. If you're not sure, best to ask or best to do your research. You need to do your research properly. So in my situation, when I went to Portugal, I didn't research. I just picked a hotel that had good prices and I thought, oh wow, this is you know a cheap hotel and it looks nice. It has got everything that I want. I'll go for it. Unfortunately, what I didn't realize was that hotel, that very nice hotel, was in a place that was difficult to access from town, from the city center. I had to catch a taxi to go to that place and it was a long ride. So I ended up spending more than I anticipated. It was a real wake up call on my part. I actually ended up hiring a car which cost me more and also realizing that they actually drive on the wrong side of the road over there, meaning that they don't drive on the left side of the road. They drive on the right side of the road. So you can imagine what a nightmare that was for me. But however, I ended up having a wonderful time. It was a bit of an adventure for me. So these are things that you want to consider. My next tip is to do with money to spend, you know, to spend on food, transport and so forth. The very first thing that you want to do is you want to check the currency of that country. You know, these days we've got our new currency in Zimbabwe. Yay! We've got the ZIG, the Zim currency that's just come up. I'm told that it is gold backed and it is actually doing well on the markets. Suppose you want to go to Zimbabwe, you want to visit Victoria Falls, you want to visit Great Zimbabwe, you want to visit Matopos, all those wonderful places in Zimbabwe. And then when you do your research, you discover that actually these days they've got the ZIG dollar. So you want to look up the ZIG, you want to see what the exchange rate is. You want to establish how many ZIG dollars you will get for one pound. So you want to do your calculations depending on how much you're going to need to spend in a day. That's another thing you need to find out. Find out just how much you need in general, how much you need to spend in a day. And this is important because when you do your budgeting, you want to look at how much you can realistically afford to spend with your budget in a day. From that knowledge, you want to look at other ways to save. How can you save on transport? How can you save on food? I'll give an example of how you can save on the amount of money you spend on food. If you're staying in a hotel, for instance, you don't always have to go to the restaurant to have food there. And usually when you book, you have the breakfast sorted. So if you have breakfast sorted and you decide, okay, I have my breakfast sorted because when I booked, I included breakfast, which is always a wise thing to do because breakfast is an important meal of the day. So you have your breakfast sorted. So what you can then do is to opt to have just the dinner at that restaurant or you can actually buy food from the market. This is why I said you need a convenient place, somewhere where you can easily access the markets or the supermarkets, somewhere where you can go and buy food from another place. You can get a takeaway, you can get fruits or something else to keep in your room. You don't always have to have food at the hotel or whatever place that you're staying at. If you're on a tight budget, that is something that you can do. And when it comes to transport, you can save money by booking your trips in advance and actually planning your trips in advance. You can do day excursions or you can book for like full day experiences. Instead of doing them separately, you have options. There are certain places where you go where you have the option to actually do block bookings. For example, if you go to Victoria Falls, you can actually book for a full day experience and if you book in advance, you can actually get a discount. Personally, I use TripAdvisor whenever I'm booking for my activities because on TripAdvisor, if you book in advance, you can actually get a discount. The prices tend to be cheaper if you do that. So you can book your trips as blocks and in advance. So you can have those day trips, half day trips to avoid you going back and forth or finding transport to go to places. So that's another way you can save on transport. And also, again, that's why I say, when you're booking your accommodation, look at the location 
Location is king, it's queen. Because if a place is convenient, sometimes you can literally walk to wherever you want to go. You don't need to catch a ride. So it is worth considering things like that because every little helps. So you want to save as much as possible. Having said that, let me just say that, yes, you're on a strict budget. You give yourself the maximum amount of money that you're prepared to spend. And that's another thing, actually. You need to be disciplined. If you decide, okay, you're going to spend $30 or 30 pounds a day, then stick to it. Because I know the temptation is just high. You go to a place, you get excited, you see this, you want to do it, you see that, you want to buy, but avoid, like resist the temptation. I remember when I went to Victoria Falls, there were a lot of things being sold, nice sculptures. There were lots and lots of things to buy. And it was hard for me to resist, especially if you're using a card, because, you know, with a credit card or a debit card, you don't necessarily see the money dwindling from your account. But that doesn't mean that it is not dwindling. You don't see those charges, those hidden charges. So this is why discipline is important. If you're operating on a tight budget, decide this is how much you want to spend and stick to it. However, on the flip side of that, if you're planning your trip and of course you're on a budget, there are times when you can actually give yourself a little bit of leeway. For example, having done your research and discovering, okay, if I want to go to Zimbabwe, I'm going to need $30 to spend in a day. Looking at your budget, you can decide, okay, I'm going to top up $5. I'm going to put $5 on top of that. So I have £35 or $35 rather instead to spend. So that will give you a bit of leeway so that you're not stressing too much. Yes, I know we are operating on a strict budget, but that doesn't mean that we have to punish ourselves. So sometimes it is worth us just giving ourselves a little bit of buffer. I like to have that little bit of buffer because when you go on holiday, sometimes you see something that you absolutely must have or you plan your activities only to discover that actually there is one more activity that you absolutely must partake in because some activities are a once in a lifetime opportunity. So this is why I always suggest giving yourself a little bit of a buffer because you don't want to miss an important opportunity because some trips, as I said, are a once in a lifetime trips. And also there are other inconveniences that may arise, inconveniences to do with transport and so forth. So if you've got that buffer, you won't stress too much. Another thing to consider as well is to do with your packing, the things that you actually carry on your holiday. So depending on the weather, depending on the situation, you only want to carry what you need. I tend to overpack myself. I have to confess, I can never decide on which clothes I want to take. I always have to have more clothes than I actually need. But if you're going on holiday, you're not going to a fashion show. You're going to enjoy yourself. So prioritize comfort over anything else. Of course, there are certain places where you need to attend evening events. You need to attend dinners and so forth. If that is something you want to do, then find out the dress code. You may need to carry different clothes depending on what it is exactly you're going to be doing, where you're going and so forth. So look at your packing. If you're in a strict budget, there's no need for you to go overboard with the clothes. You don't need to buy new clothes. Sometimes you find that if you go to certain places, you find people are wearing t-shirts. People are wearing flip-flops because they're on holiday to enjoy themselves. Those activities are their priority, not the clothes you're wearing. So dress for fun, dress for comfort more than anything else. And my last tip is to do with communication because I know when we're on holiday, we like to take pictures. We want to go on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and share all those precious moments with our loved ones back home. So in that case, you want to consider your phone bill. You want to look at your contract because people have got different phone contracts and depending on the contract that you're on, depending on the package that you've got, you will be charged if you go to foreign countries and you use your phone, you will be charged. So you want to use a Wi-Fi whenever possible because Wi-Fi in some places is free. So you want to use free Wi-Fi whenever you can if you want to save on your phone bill because you don't want to incur those roaming charges. And another option as well is to consider buying a local SIM card to make phone calls, send text messages to avoid those roaming charges. So these are some of the options that you want to consider to save on your phone bill. So this is pretty much what I had to share with you in this video. As always, I hope you found these tips useful. If there are other tips that you want to share with us, then by all means, feel free to share them in the comment section. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.